So he's been on the campaign trail before, knows a lot about it. Uh, Mike Huckabee, welcome. Well, thank you very much. We had a little bit of a technical glitch, but I'm glad we were able to connect and uh, delighted to be with you. You're going to uh, treat us to some guitar playing. I see you have something <laughs> in the background there. Yeah, I'm in my music room. I've got uh, quite a collection of guitars behind me, but um, a lot of stories, but we don't have time for that. I wish we did because it's some pretty cool stuff back there. So let's talk about the midterms. What are you looking at and seeing? I think we're going to see a blowout, and I know that's kind of going out on a limb, but all the signs point to uh, Republicans having the best night of their history, I think, in a midterm. And the reason I say that is because I'm watching some things where we shouldn't even be in play. I don't know that we're going to win the Connecticut Senate race, but the fact that Blumenthal is in trouble, same thing in Washington state. I think without a doubt, we're going to win in places like Arizona, we're going to see the pickup of the uh, Senate seat in uh, Georgia. Uh, J.D. Vance will win in Ohio. And part of the problem Democrats have, they don't have a message. They got nothing. All they can say is, gee, hadn't it been great since we opened the border, shut down energy, doubled your gas prices, made it almost impossible for you to buy bread, bacon, butter, and beans unless you sell a kidney at the grocery store to pay for it. And by the way, don't leave your house because there's a good chance you'll get knocked in the head by a brick by some stranger who will be out of jail before you get out of the hospital. So vote for us. We'll keep doing what we're doing. I just don't think they've got a message. And people, even hardcore Democrats who have their brain still connected, are thinking the Republicans couldn't do worse than these guys. Let's give them a shot. So uh, Cheryl and I were talking about this a bit earlier. Let's say there is a red wave, a red tsunami come next week. Do you see uh, President Biden pivoting to the middle like uh, a la Bill Clinton or do you see him working with Republicans who might have both chambers of Congress or, or is he still going to push through or uh, try to push through as much of his radical agenda through executive orders? I think he'll push through his agenda as much as he can. And I hope the Republicans have the guts to stand and fight. I hope they'll take him to court for unconstitutional um, power grabs that he does not have the authority to do. I never understood why the Republicans allowed Obama to go through that whole, I've got a pen and a phone stuff. Uh, you know, the, the Constitution makes it very clear what a president can and cannot do. My gosh, when I was a governor in the executive branch, I would have loved to told the legislature just to uh, go pound sand, but it didn't work like that. And I never thought it would uh, be appropriate if, it, if, if I could just pull it off. So I'd love to believe that Joe Biden would have that kind of moment as Bill Clinton did. Uh, but Bill Clinton, at his heart, was and is a pragmatist. He understood that there are certain things government ought to do. And he was more interested in getting those things done and having some achievement than he was just being an ideologue. He's very different than his wife on that count. Joe Biden, frankly, I don't know if Joe even knows most days what he's saying when he squints and screams at the teleprompter. He clearly doesn't understand how to get off the podium and the stage. He wanders around looking for the exit. Uh, pointing and asking, how do I get off here? Where do I go? So do I think that he's going to sit down with Republicans and come up with some thoughtful ideas they can agree on? Actually, not a chance. How confident are you that when Republicans take over the House and Senate, which I think they will as well, that there will be some accountability for Hunter Biden, Anthony Fauci? Do you see any type of I know that there has been talk about hearings, but do you see any real accountability for the American people? Gosh, I hope so, because I think if they don't, then the Republicans have a shot at losing what ought to be an easy pickup of the White House in 2024. Uh, Republicans have got to deliver. They can't do what they did in 2008 or yeah, 2010, I mean, after they got uh, uh, the House back and people were so upset over Obamacare. They came back in and they made a bunch of promises. We're going to repeal Obamacare. We're going to, and they didn't do anything. Yeah. And if they pull that stunt again, and all they do is want to get invited to the nice cocktail parties in Georgetown and make sure that they make the donor class happy, um, I think you'll see a lot of people abandon them and they can't afford that. There's going to have to be a strong stomach 
for holding Democrats accountable, going back and asking, what did the Department of Justice and the FBI actually know about the Russia hoax? Who was involved? Who lied? Who committed felonies by falsifying information that went to a FISA court? How much money did Hunter Biden get from the Chinese? And by the way, how much of it went to the big guy, Joe himself? These are questions that they're going to have to answer um, and get answers to. And if they don't, uh, then a pox on all their houses, because we're not sending them up there just to enjoy themselves and to see if they can go jetting around the country at fundraisers with all the swells. They've got to stand and deliver this time. So let's say the red wave happens um, on Tuesday. Poll after poll has shown Democrats don't approve of President Biden um, and would like to see a new face run in 2024. Do you think that Joe Biden will run again in 2024? And if not, who will be the leader of the Democratic Party? I'm not sure Joe will be capable of running. And I, I'm not trying to be unkind or mean. But, I mean, we're seeing some real issues with his cognitive ability Um uh, his inability to put a sentence together and to make sense. And I think that if his family doesn't come and create an intervention, I think there'll be some prominent Democrats who will say, Mr. President, for the sake of the party and in their view, for the sake of the country, I think maybe it would be a good idea for you to be a one-term president and go out on a bang. The question is, who do the Democrats have? It can't be Kamala Harris. She's as incoherent in Joe as Joe and John Fetterman. And, um, her word salad speeches are something to behold. They'll be studying them in rhetorical theory classes for decades to come in colleges across the country. So then they've got Hillary, um, who is as old as dirt and as mean as a uh, junkyard dog. I don't think that's going to fly. So then you're looking at, is there some uh, centrist Democrat governor out there? I don't know. Gavin Newsom will run. He's no centrist. Um, and if the Democrats nominate Gavin Newsom, then I think we have a real shot of uh, running the table in 2024. Do you think the Democrat Party has progressed so far left that there's no turning back for them? Or do you think there is still an opportunity in this country for a more moderate uh, partnering voice between parties to be brought forward? Well, there could be. Uh, we, we saw the Democrats lurch to the left when they uh, nominated Walter Mondale, who promised everyone on national television he would raise their taxes. But I also remind myself that this is not the Democrat Party of our grandfathers or even our fathers. Um, this is a different Democrat Party that is more in line with Bernie Sanders than they are with um, any of the Kennedys. Uh, it's just a different Democrat Party. And you don't see what at least once existed, and that's the blue dog Democrats who were pro-Second Amendment, some of them pro-life. Those folks don't exist. They've been drummed out of the party and sent packing. I'd like to think that it's possible that the Democrats could uh, see the error of their ways, and maybe they will. If they ever want to win national elections, uh, they're going to have to come back closer to center because they're so far uh, off the center of the cookie as as one might say, that it's not possible for them to uh, continue to appeal to working class people by suggesting that the people who work are going to make contributions in large measure to people who won't work, create open borders, uh, raise taxes, make it impossible to heat homes and cool them in the summer. And somehow we're supposed to applaud them for that. So one of two things will happen. The Democrats will decreasingly fall off into oblivion or increasingly fall off into oblivion or they'll uh, have a, a day of reckoning and they'll put someone in their uh, in their leadership position much like Bill Clinton who talked about being the third way and he was not the far left person and uh, you know they had a winning message and they won with it I don't know if they got that much sense left in them now we'll see so there's been reports uh, that former President Trump could announce his candidacy for president uh, the day after uh, the election next week. Um, he seems to be inching closer and closer toward it in every rally that he's doing. He's doing one in Iowa, which is not a battleground state, uh, at the end of this week. 
Uh, what do you think the prospects of him are announcing again? And do you think that's a good thing for the Republican Party? Well, it, in a way, it would be good to find out, is he going to run or not? Because if he is, then I think a lot of folks step back and say, then I'm not going to, don't want to challenge him. I think if he, um, if he's, if he's not going to run, it's probably a good thing to get that out there as well. But a lot of people may not understand that one of the reasons candidates delay the announcement is because the very moment that they declare candidacy, they immediately subject themselves to all kinds of legal and accounting responsibilities with the Federal Election Commission. It gets expensive. It gets tedious. And the longer that a person can hold off making that announcement, the better off they really are, unless they have to go out early just to say to people, hey, I'm really serious about running, here goes. Donald Trump doesn't have to do that. Um, he's not going to be having to worry about name ID or even raising funds. So in, it's in his best interest to hold off and to kind of keep everybody guessing. So he does not put himself in that position of having to give all these reports and hiring a room full of attorneys and accountants to file them all. That's a really good point uh, to remember. So talk briefly about Michelle Obama as a candidate, because of course, you know, she's written a book, there's been whispers for a very long time that she would be the idea of candidate for the Democrats. She says that she never wants to run, but who knows? And how would she fare against Donald Trump? Well, frankly, I think Michelle Obama could be a very formidable uh, candidate for the Democrats, far more so than Kamala, Hillary. Um, among the base of the Democrat Party, she's still very highly favored. Now, you know, ask Republicans what they think. Maybe they're not so uh, gung-ho about it. But then again, Republicans aren't going to be that gung-ho about any Democrat. But Michelle Obama would bring something to the table that no other Democrat right now does, and that is that she has a popularity, she has uh, the ability to articulate. She can actually get a full sentence out without somebody going, <laughs> huh? what does that mean? So there are some advantages. In fact, I, I listened to Barack Obama this weekend, and I don't agree with what he's saying, and a lot of it was balloon juice and nonsense, and he was talking about how Republicans wanna uh, take away Social Security and Medicare, which is an outright lie. So he was blowing smoke out of all of his bodily orifices when he was talking. But I found myself saying, you know, he's a really good speaker and he's still entertaining. And even when he was saying stuff about Republicans, it wasn't true. Quite frankly, just from an observer standpoint, he was entertaining and even funny. And I thought, boy, they don't have anybody who can stand at the podium and at least inspire the crowd, kind of make them feel like that there's hope. Um, yeah. I mean, I just don't see anyone else in the Democrat Party who's who's capable of doing that right now. So very quickly, uh, Barack Obama is on the campaign trail. Uh, he's in Nevada. He's going to go to Arizona. He'll be in Pennsylvania. Um, these battleground states. Do you think that he's going to energize the Democratic base? And will his campaigning make a difference uh, or be the difference maker for Democrats? No, I don't, because uh, even though he may... Uh, remind them of the, the days that they used to win elections, he still can't give an answer as to how come they can't pay their heating bill, yeah. why their grocery bill is up almost double, and why it is that two and a half million people have crossed the border and they can't cross the street without fear of being shot or hit in the back of the head with a brick. So all of the things that Obama can go and do, and he, he can even scare them about Republicans, but they know what's happening in their own families. And they know when they sit at the dinner table, they're not sure they can uh, really look forward to next week's groceries because they don't know if they can afford it. They're, they're thinking about putting on an extra sweater just to stay warm. So I don't think all the endorsements and appearances by Obama in the world will change what's going to happen next Tuesday. And it's going to be, uh, I, I truly believe it's going to be historic. Well, thank you so much for your time. And as you've been saying, as we've been saying, it's all about kitchen table issues uh, this election cycle. Thank you so much, Governor. Thank you. Great to be with you.